Hi, this is Alan. So I've got my 87 Cutlass Supreme here and uh, it won't start. Pretty sure it has a bad battery. But before I go and replace it, I'm going to go ahead and test it with my digital voltmeter. Which I've got hooked up right now. Showing battery voltage. There it is, out of the sun. 12.4. Um, <clears throat> Car won't start, so I've given the battery full charge, and I don't have any fancy testing equipment or a load tester or uh, a repair shops have this thing called a carbon pile tester. All I've got is my voltmeter, so I'm going to use the car's engine cranking and headlights and blower motor to simulate a load on the battery and see how well my battery voltage holds up. For cranking, to check the battery output, we need to have a fully charged battery. So you want to see over at least 12.2 or higher volts, 12.2, 12.3, um, to, to go ahead and do the test. And then when we put the load on, we want to see at least the battery be able to maintain at least 9.5 volts, 9.5 volts. If it drops any lower than that, we really need to replace the battery. The battery's definitely shot. I, I don't even have to turn the key on. Just the blower motor alone brought it down to uh, below 9.5 volts. I mean, uh, you know, I, I put the blower motor, I turn the blower motor off and turn the key off and it'll start to recover again. I'm back up to 10 volts, but just the key on with a little bit of blower motor. And, uh, you know, it pulls it right back down to 8.9. If I go to start it, you can see I'm at 7 point volts, 7 already. Um, can't really do much more in this car until we get a fresh battery in it. To remove the battery in this car, it's pretty easy. I've got a 13 millimeter bolt that I have to take out here and this bracket just bends out of the way and I've got a 10 millimeter bolt holding the battery support in so in a lot of the 80s GM once you take the holder bolt off the battery holder it's just a slot that comes pops out then the final step is to take your battery terminals off. I've got a, it's a 516, so I've got a, a, a wrench for battery terminals that makes it a little easier to do. And my terminal's stripped. So much for the wrench. Well, so this terminal stripped is really old. It's just had to wrench on it one too many times. So what, I, uh, what I'm going to do, and I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but I'm just going to snap a set of ice grips on there. Break it loose, and there it is. Came right off. So that's the negative side, which is this, if this pair of ice grips was to touch anything metal, it wouldn't be a big deal. But you'd have to be really, really careful on the positive side. Because any wrench you put on there, if it touches metal, you're going to have a big arc. But by removing the negative side first, I won't have to worry about that. I'll remove the negative side and then uh, I won't, nothing will, nothing's going to arc when I touch the positive because the battery will already be disconnected. And there's the positive side. So with the bracket out of the way, the support gone, two terminals is connected. It's off to the store for a new battery. So I went to Walmart and got me a new battery. I'm going to take my battery hold down. Lock it into the groove. So I always connect the positive side first. The positive side will spark a lot more than the negative side. So if you connect the positive side first, you'll get no sparks at all from it because the negative side hasn't been hooked up yet. 
I've got a new battery hooked up. I'm at 12 and a half volts. If I turn the key on and hit it with a blower motor and hit it with lights, it pulls to 11.8, which is great. If you remember, my other battery pulled down to about 8 volts, and you see how quickly it recovers, right back up to 12.2. Um, and if I turn the key off, it goes right up to 12.3. So nice to have a new battery. I'm going to try to crank it. Um, really to truly test a battery uh, I, I think and I think that a fan motor and a headlights aren't really enough it's if it fails that's fine but that's not really enough load to put on a battery to see if it would pass the best thing you could do to put a load on a battery is to crank the engine without it starting and see what kind of voltage you get on your battery particularly on it's a cold day here and this is a v8 so it should pull pretty good amps I can't measure the amps because I don't have a load testing device or a tool that can measure amps so I'm just going to crank it without it starting. I know there's no gas in the carburetor, so my engine isn't going to start. On, a, on most cars that are fuel injected, you either need to disconnect your fuel pump fuse so the car won't start. Or on some cars, uh, a lot of cars actually, they have a what they call a clear flood mode. If you just hold your throttle, your gas, all the way to the floor, it'll prevent the car from starting. It'll cut off the fuel supply. And then you should be able to crank your car. And... Um, without it starting and then you can while your engine's cranking you can measure your battery voltage and see how low it drops if it's under 9.5 it's definitely I would get a battery if it's above if it's just above you know, you, you know it's, it's it becomes a judgment call it should really maintain a well above 9.5 on a new battery so let's see what my cranking voltage is You can see it's good, it's holding a 10.7 and uh, it's stabilized right there, it didn't drop at all, so that's a brand new battery and uh, we're in good shape. 